Good day everybody and welcome to Manny's Makings. Today we're going to do another beginner tutorial. I'm trying to mix it up so that uh, people who are just learning can uh, have some fun. And we're going to make uh, the other pa other parts of these two earrings. You can wear them the way they are together but this is the first one we're going to start with. And it's uh, some basic uh, wire techniques and it's pretty simple and then this is the second one we're going to do and again um, you can use any combination of beads you like I just happen to use turquoise and coral um, red coral gemstones so that I could have some fun with those so you're going to need a few different pieces of equipment so let's start with the first one we're going to start with this one and this one um, it uses chips and a lot of people are like what do I do with my chips I have stone chips um, so this is a good place to use them. So you, this is uh, chips of uh, real jade, and then it's red coral gemstones. Uh, this has a feather, and it has a four-hold coin. Um, you could use uh, any other four-hold kind of piece, or you could just use a, a larger ring and do the same sort of, uh, like another jump ring-ish kind of thing, a bigger jump ring, or an oval jump ring. Um, and then it's got a bigger chunk of coral up top and then an ear finding. So uh, I also included some little silver 11 OC beads in this. Um, so they'll, they'll be those as well. So let's get started. Um, I used a 20 gauge scrap wire when I was making it. So there's my ear finding. There's my bigger chunk. My two little chunks. And then my red and these two are a little bit smaller than this one so I'm going to put this one in the middle and there's my feather so I have everything ready to go so what we need to do is just start making the pieces so this one here requires use, use to wire so I've got just some scrap pieces um, let's grab my ruler so this is a three inch scrap and this one here is a four inch scrap it should they should be big enough by the looks of them so I went to my scrap bin but if you don't have a scrap bin yet because you're just starting out so just cut off a small piece and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a loop on this end now there's lots of different ways to do this um, and I can see that this end is not flush too so see how it flashes at me it flashes me so I'm gonna actually clear some of this stuff out of the background so that it focuses really well for you so you can see see if I can get some of this stuff out of the background there we go okay so see how that flashes when I see that little flash it means I know I don't have a flush cut so you're gonna need a pair of cutters flush cutters and I'm just gonna cut that flush I just took a little tiny piece off and I'm just gonna put it somewhere in the garbage I have a little garbage beside me so that I know it's flush to start with and you need to decide how big your loop wants to be now because I'm going around this coin it's just a coin a stamped coin with a bear uh, um, totem on it um, I know I need to have a decent size hole I don't want a super small hole but I don't want a massive hole so I'm gonna just go part way up my pliers nothing major now this is one way to do it and that is my P way if you've seen how to do the other ones so you have a P first and then you put your pliers back in and let's see if I can get this showing this when the pliers get put back in you put your see the show focus for me come on I'm pretty close to my camera here so it uh, you can put your pliers back in and then you tilt back the other way and it'll make the just flattening it out a bit it makes like a little balloon on the top so that's one way to do it and then there's a second way and I'll show you as we go along so I need this because that's gonna go on with a feather and then I need the stone so I'm gonna put a silver bead and now these 11 O's just fit on the 20 um, and I'm I'm putting it on my hand and you can see that it slides fairly freely it's not I'm not having to drag it down the wire so I don't have to worry about like messing up the finish or anything like that and then I need my biggest bead of the three um, and then I need another silver one okay so I have that's what it looks like so you have your little loop which could be a little more centered but it's close there we go a little loop and some stones and now I need to make 
the ring that this is going to um, dangle from. So I have to make the ring, and it doesn't have to be as big because this hole isn't as big, and it can be a little bit more proportional. So the thing is, is that the rings, the holes have to go both the same way. So if I look at my example here, let me pull the example out. Can you see that the ring here and the ring here are in the same direction rather than like they're both this way or that way? Okay. So that, because this hangs with an open hole here and this has to go in the hole there. So you have to figure that stuff out when you're attaching things, but that's okay. Just You can always move the loop. All right. So I'm going to take my thumbnail and I'm going to put it next to... You know, not super tight because I want some room for this coral to move just a little bit. And I'm just going to bend it at like 90 degrees. Okay? So I bent it at 90 degrees and I'm bending it in the same plane. If you look at it this way, it's the same plane as the other loop is. Okay? Now these beads are going to want to slide up, so just tuck them back down. And I stick my finger next to... Now my finger is always there, and for me it's a fairly safe measurement. And I just stick my clippers there, and then I grab a hold of the other side of it so that it, the wire doesn't go everywhere. And I have this little piece left. How much is that little piece? I don't know. Let's see. Three, four sixteenths. So that's... Oh, it's... One, two... No, three sixteenths. Three sixteenths of an inch. Depending on how big a loop is, you need more or less. So, all right. So now it's time to do the loop. So I'm going to put this a little bit closer to the end of my pliers this time, and I'm going to come around. Well, I didn't start right at the end, but I'll move it to the end now. I'm going to come around, and I'm just bringing this around, bringing this around, bringing this around till it touches. Now you can see that that's not where it needs to be sitting because I have a little bit more space, so I'm just backing it out and bringing it down my pliers a little bit. It's okay. See? So I have the, this is what the, whoop, what the piece looks like. You can see it on my, you can see it on my board here. One loop, two loops. All right, so now we got to open the loops. So whatever loop you want to put on whatever end, and I can see that this is not closed because my bead is sliding past it. See how that's not closed? So I gotta close that off. There we go. Close it off. And if you need to, you can always tweak it back. See? It's the wire's pretty forgiving, making sure they're both in the same plane. I'm happy. Okay, so you have to open this just like you would a jump ring. So I'm taking my pliers and I'm gonna turn them to the side. So it makes like a little corkscrew. See how it makes a little corkscrew? And then I'm gonna put it on my piece. And I'm putting it in the middle because that's where this particular element is going. That's what I decided. Okay. And then the other one I'm going to open. And I'm going to put on my... open it the same way. And I'm going to put on my... Now this has a... it's double-sided so it doesn't matter which way it goes on. If you have a charm that's not double-sided, it does matter which way it goes on. So you just want to make sure everything's nice and tight and closed. And I can see that that's not quite closed, so let me grab my other pliers. So I have round nose pliers, flush cutters, and... Um, okay, so now she's closed. Okay, so we have our first element on. Yay! So now we need some head pins. Now. A head pin has a little t like a little nail head on it. An eye pin is what we made when we first started making and has an eye in it so you can see through the eye. So if it, if it t doesn't have a little circle on the top then it's called a head pin. So we need a head pin and these ones I think are 20 gauge as well because the wire feels about the same. They could be 22 but I doubt it. I think they're 20. So I'm picking up the one um, silver bead. Now I need to pick up a, jade, a small jade bead. Make sure I got the right ones for the right pattern that I'm doing here. Yep. Now these are not actually all equal. They came in. A, I got these ones 
they're in a bag and as you can see they're all different sizes so what I did is I found ones that were four of them that were close in size and they sort of the whole sort of sat in the middle of the chunks and because some of them are really flat and some of them are really fat and some of them are really big and some of them are really small like this one's a really big one and this one's a really flat one so I, I tried to find ones that were similar and I just dug through the bag and found the closest I could so don't, don't it doesn't have to be perfect it's it's an actual rock so I put another silver bead on and then I'm gonna put on one of my two other jade beads okay so there's my one now I need one more silver bead okay and now I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time I'm going to take my knot my nail right where that is now you can use your pliers if you want I find my pliers end up leaving space so and I just bend it at 90 degrees and I'm pushing this at the same time as I'm pushing down so I end up with like a little bend here okay I sort of hold my bead down put my finger in again my fingers a certain length and it's always the same and I, you can squish it in and to change the, see how I can squish my finger I'm just as soon as it hits up against when this is sitting straight across my finger as soon as it hits up against and I can cut it straight across that's my sort of gauge now everybody can use their own gauge and if you want you can draw a little line on a piece of paper or something uh, I saw that as a suggestion in another video I was watching I thought was really great and now this time you're gonna again we're turning it turning it you can go slow it's always recommended you go slow rather than fast and I know I'm not doing this straight see how I'm, I know that the wire is not straight I can feel it in my fingers so I'm just gonna bend it straighter there we go make sure that that bead stays up there there we go now it's up again it's not perfectly perfectly centered so and it's okay if there's a little tiny bit of space so if it's not perfectly centered remember I told you how you can break its neck back that's what we call it breaking the neck so that that's a lot more centered and again we're gonna open it now I've been opening it and feeding it in so that the closing happens on the back side and I'm just staying consistent I can see that this is there we go I'm just tweaking it in so there's the one on the one side yay now we're gonna do that again another eye pin now the eye pins can come with balls on the ends or little knots on the ends or you can even take a straight piece of wire and if I took the straight piece of wire here and I hammered the end of it and made it splail out a bit the bead wouldn't fall off the first silver bead and then that would um, give you the same effect so if you don't have any eye pins you can just use your wire your 20 gauge wire and smack the end of it okay big thing too is when you're starting to do a project like this is making sure that the beads that you've picked um, all fit the wire and especially if you don't have a lot of types of wire so turquoise another silver I'm just out of the way getting a silver on here and then another piece of turquoise and that one that one's the real big one on the top where's my other little piece of no I don't need another I need coral the there's the hole okay and one more silver so again I take it and this one doesn't matter which direction you're at let me move that out of the way come on focus baby there we go take it and you're gonna bend it it could be bent just a little bit more so I'm gonna take it and push down and so that it's bent okay put my fi my finger in and I cut it the other thing too is that when you take your scraps off from your cuttings if they're the same means you cut them this look at that see they're the same now if your beads are different sizes like these are um, you may not always get that but if you're using 
let's say fire polished uh, beads or something else because you can do this with any kind of bead you want you're gonna get um, different results so just rolling this over rolling this over and then up I just changed my player so my tension was at a different place again it's not perfect so I need to go back and break its neck a little bit that's okay that's what you do you just play a little bit till you get it where you're happy with it I'm happy with it there could be a little bit straighter but there we go okay open it up again and I'm gonna put this on the other side I did one of my cheap didn't open it far enough routines if you've watched any of my videos you know that I have a tendency not to do that and I don't know why it's Maybe because I don't like closing jump rings. I don't know. Jump rings will never be my thing. I've done some jump, jump ring jewelry, like Jane Mill jewelry, but I don't like it. Come on. Okay, open up. There we go. I opened it good. And because this is hand stamped, um, it's uneven thickness. As you can see, it's really uneven thickness all over. So you have to make sure you get enough. Make sure that's closed good. So there we have the three. So we have the bottom done. Yay! So now I need another piece of wire. And this one is going to do the top part of my earring. Which is, remember how we did this loop here? So it's going to be a loop the same way with a bead, a big piece of jade, a bead, and then another loop to put your ear finding on. There we go. Okay. Now with this one, one loop goes this way and the other loop goes the other way and that's only because of the way the ear wire hangs so you know just be aware uh, the first one the loops went the same way and this time they go the opposite way okay so again I'm gonna check do I have any flash move that out of the way do I have any flash nope I have a flush cut so I'm good and again Bringing it over, doing the P, making sure that they're beside each other. There we go, and then bringing it back. So I have my little lollipop. Okay, make sure she's closed. She is. So now I'm going to put on a silver bead. And as I said, again, this was I missed the silver bead. This is scrap wire from the. Um, scrap in so you know some of the pieces are longer than I actually need them I don't know how much I actually really need I just used I do a lot of this from little bits and pieces I have left from doing other wire work remember the you know if you watch my last video I had pieces that were and I said I'm putting that in the in the scrap bin well that's where some of these are coming from so there's my first one and now I need my big chunk of coral I'm just finding the hole and I checked all of these first that they would fit over both my head pins and my okay so and I like to put a seed bead on e on the sides of a uh, precious or semi precious stone so I don't have to worry as much about the pressure um, being on this stone, this stone's going to spin, but it's not going to have a lot of pressure on it anyway, even when I'm making something. Uh, you don't have to. Um, you're only going to be putting pressure on it for literally that long. Okay, so let's bring that bead down. Okay, so that one didn't tweak as much as I'd like it to, so if I want to take my pliers, I can take my pliers in and bend it a little more, give it a little bit more sharper angle, and then bring it back up. See? Better. That's much better. Okay. Now, if I wanted to save this because got, I've got a long piece, um, I could cut it off, which I'm going to do, or I can put my pliers in and wrap it around my pliers and do it that way. I'm going to just cut it off. Again, first my first finger, not my second finger. There we go. Cut it off. Put that back in my scrap bin because it's still, as long as it's two inches or longer. Or even even an inch and a half or longer, I keep it because uh, if you've watched my other videos, there's like 
one it shows you how to do S links and things like that so I'm bringing it and I'm just turning it and turning it and turning it and there we go so I got them both the same way uh oh look they're on the same plane watch because I wasn't even paying attention as I'm busy talking to you guys Okay, so I'm going to take this one, hold it in my fingers, and I'm going to twist. Now, just make sure that they're opposite each other. I think I'm pretty good. What do you think? There we go. So, time to open these and put them on the places we need them to be. So, one has to be open and put on my ear hook. So, which side do I want for my ear hook? Let's do this one. I want the bee to hang this way. So again, you open it the same way you would a jump ring. Pop it open. Put your ear hook on. Pop it closed. Now, that probably wasn't a smart idea. Nope. Because what I just realized is, remember how I've been putting everything with the, the openings to the back? This one would be to the front. So... I probably should have put it on my thing first. And a lot of people don't worry about that kind of stuff. I don't know why I do. Don't need to, but yeah, let's just make this. I'll turn that into here. Since I got it open. Make sure it's good and closed. Everything's good. Okay. So now we open up this one. and we put on now this is the front this is how the ear wire has to go it, th there is a back and front to this because there's nothing on the back side it's a stamp of the maker okay so I have to put this on this way so that your earring is going to hang the right way okay and I close it back up and it's not closed all the way so we're just going to rock it back and forth a little bit till she's closed good and there's my second earring. So let's take a look at the set of earrings. Now they're not going to be exactly the same, but they're going to be close enough that they're going to make a beautiful pair of earrings. So let me just see if I can get them in other opposite fingers here. Ah, that one wants to run away. Look at that. I'd be quite happy to wear those, and I probably will. Okay, and I was going really slow. Um, you can go a lot faster once you get used to doing this kind of stuff. And this makes a, a really beautiful earring. Really simple. Okay, the second one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, just a smudge more. And I'm going to add some 8 0 black beads and some 11 0 black beads because I'm just adding a little bit of different color. So this one has a little bit of black in it, see? And I needed 8 0 beads so this turtle didn't slide. Now, this turtle is just fake uh, turquoise, and I got this from look at the size of that hole. It's meant to go over a top of leather or whatever, but you can use it for whatever you want. Um, and I got this at Michael's. So you can go raid Michael's. Um, this is from you know, those sets where you have all the bars and they give you, you get a big set of all the different colored bars. And again, this is a Michael's. Um, I picked the tiniest ones that I tend to never use, and they make perfect little dangly things in the middle. So let's start with a dangly thing in the middle. With the, I'm taking my a longer piece of scrap wire, and this one's five inches, and hopefully it's long enough. And you, you need a, one jump ring, and I you need it closed. Well, not yet. So, all right. So let's start with this. Move everything else out of the way. So we can see, I'm just going to move the seed beads off to the side a little bit here. Okay. So <coughs> I tried this several <coughs> different ways and what I ended up doing, I didn't like the way it hung and this, when I just did it like a briolet where I came up, I didn't like the way this hung and I wanted it to have movement or guarantee that it had movement. And it, 
it sort of, I don't know, fit in better with the whole scope of everything. So I tried different things and this is what I ended up coming up with. So I'm going to put a bead on. I got a bead on my, now look, this one's too tight. See, sometimes they're too tight and if that's the case, you can't use that bead. Because the, these um, 11 O's with um, this gauge of wire, it's a really close fit. So there's a good one. I found a good one. And then I'm going to put this on. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to put another bead on. I know, that was a Superman theme song. I've been watching uh, Marvel Comics. I don't know why. Okay. So I need to leave enough wire. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this little piece here. I'm going to bend the wire up and then I'm going to wrap it around the bottom and then I'm going to bead some more and then I'm going to make a loop. So I need enough to do all of that. Um, the f at least for this side that's, that's left on this side, I need to have enough to make it wrap around there. All right. So let's err on the side of caution. Let's see how much I'm airing on. Let's see if this works, guys. So I'm giving it a full inch. So I just take my, I just took my my pliers, move this out of the way. Took my pliers. Is it focusing? Yeah. And I bent it like this. Up. Okay. And then I came around the other side, and I hold the seed bead sort of down. And then I'm going to bend it down so that they're parallel with each, both bends are parallel with each other. Okay. See, so you have like a little swing. Woo. Okay. <laughs> so now I have to bring them across each other. I didn't leave myself, I would have been better with about an inch and a half. But I didn't want this to be huge. So I brought it down, brought this one down, brought this one down. Now if you look, it's pretty tight, but it still moves. See how it's pretty tight? So you got to come down quite a bit, just like a briole, um, doing it on top of a briole. And then I'm going to take this long piece, and I'm going to take it where the two of them over intersect each other. And I'm going to bend it up, upwards. Try not to do that. Okay, so this is what I have. I'm going to bring it in a bit more. There we go. So this is what I have. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's not going to be exactly the same as the other one. But pretty damn close. So now I have this mess. So how do I hold on to this? I just take my pliers and go like this. And I'm holding across this bead's just hanging loosely on the other side. And I'm holding across the two. And then I'm going to take this other wire and I'm going to start bending it. And I'm going to only want to wrap it like two times. Once. Twice. And you can do that with your pliers if you need to. And I finished it on the back side. Okay. Just pulling and pushing and tweaking everything here. And this is really having a hard time focusing because i got too many other things on the screen. Sorry about that, guys. So then I take my cutters and I'm just going to cut it off. I'm just holding my finger on it so it doesn't ding across the room and I end up stepping on it. And then I'm just going to tuck that end down. Now there's going to be a bead next to it, but I still want to tuck the end down. Okay, so in this case I did uh, silver black, silver black, but I used the 8 O's instead of the uh, 11 O's we're going to use on the side ones. Okay, so silver. Come on. I'm trying to find the hole. Sometimes I find it easier than trying to get it off the board. There we go, silver. And I used an 8 O um, on the other two ones on the side. On this, these ones I used 11 O's, but you could use 8 O's for the whole thing. And then it would save you one more color of bead that you had to have. Silver. Put the bead down. So this is what I have so far. So I have the three beads. I'm going to put black. 
and another silver. Come on. There we go. So guess what we're going to do? Same as we've been doing so far. Now, this time, this has to go to the front. And this is going to go around this way. And it's, it's going to go this way, rather than coming this way. And that's because it has to go around the jump ring, right? So I'm going to take my piece, and I'm holding it. I consider this the front because this is, see how that goes there? It, the slant's this way, so I'm count, count calling this the front, okay? So I'm going to bend this towards the front, do the 90 degree thing. I'm going to cut it off. See, I have way more wire than I needed. Okay, I'm going to save that piece too because it's long enough to use for something else. Round nose pliers. Now when I'm putting this on my round nose pliers, I'm putting it in so I, I can't feel the, um, the edge there, okay? Maybe you'll want to hold it like this so you can see what you're doing. If that's, you find that helpful, that's more than welcome to do that. Whatever way works that makes you able to do the job that you need to do. And so now I have this is this way and this is the other way. See, they're opposite each other. Just awesome. So there's one element done. We're going to do the three elements first on this one and then we're going to do... Then we're going to put it on the jump ring. Uh, we'll do the four, four elements, including the turtle element, and we'll put them all in the jump ring. So now I need an eye pin. Or head pin, sorry, not an eye pin. And I need a silver. A red piece of coral. And these are all gnarly. They're kind of funny looking. So finding the hole, there, there's dark spots on them too, like um, some of the pieces were... So I got this. I paid quite a bit and got a big bag of coral pieces. So I have a big bag. And then with those ones, I did the silver below that. And then I did silver, black, silver. Silver, black, silver. And I did those in the 11 O's. But again, you can do them if you want. So I just added a little touch of black in there and this one doesn't matter which way you do it which way you bend it over I'm just bending it over 90 degrees and again cut it off and we're gonna take it and bend it around slowly okay Now, if you mess it up, like I just did, and it's totally not straight, and I think I cut it too short. Nope, I'm okay. If you mess it up, and you, it's a head pin, it's one head pin, so you cut it up, off, take the beads off, and reuse your beads. Um, so there's my second piece done, so there's one more head pin. I'll do this one a little bit faster. Silver, coral. Silver, black, silver. Bend it over. Oop. Cut it where I need it to be. So there's three done. Now we have to do the turtle one, and this one's a little harder because it's got such a big hole. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is make a loop that's going to go over the end, uh, over the jump ring, because everything is connected with the jump ring in the center. See? And I, if you want to get a list of the materials that I'm using, um, I always put a list underneath the videos uh, after I complete them or before I post them. So all the list of ingredients, and I made that too small, so I'm going to make that a little bigger. 
So what I'm doing is sticking my pliers back in. And again, I'm going to open it back up a little bit, stick my pliers a little further, and bend it there. And I don't like that. See? Yucky. So guess what I'm going to do? Yucky. Cut it off flush. Start again. There we go. Much better. Now I gotta break its neck. Now with this one, there's a way you gotta build it, and that's because right here there's two legs, and the two legs get in the way if you're trying to make a loop and stuff. It makes it really hard for you to bend this last loop at the bottom. It's much easier to do at the top, so this will be the bottom loop, and we'll work our way up from the bottom, okay? So now I'm going to put a silver bead on, because I think that's what's on the other one, yes, and then a big fat black one. And if you're worried about if the bead that you're putting on the top has got a huge hole, you can actually fit um, 11 O's inside, and they'll, or you know, 15 O's or whatever if your wire allows it. Um, they'll fit inside, but this I want it to spin. It's not a big deal. It's not hurting anything. And then I'm putting another big black bead on the top, and then another silver bead. There we go. So this is what I have. And again, this one here, the loops have to go in um, sort of opposite directions. Okay. So this one's like this. So I'm going to hold it like this, and then because it, then it's up and down, and then I'm going to push against that. Whoops, and bend. So I had to move my hand, and I may have messed it up. Yep, I did, but we'll fix it afterwards. Because all the beads started sliding up, so I was like, "Oh, there we go." So I see that, and my wire is coming this way, but I can see my loop in the front. So we're doing pretty good. Do a cut. Cut that off. My round nose. Make sure my beads are staying down, which they're not. That one silver bead is climbing up the hill. See? It's climbing up the hill. And it needs to go back down. So I have to straighten this out a little bit to get that silver bead back down the hill. There we go. Now this one might be messed up pretty bad because I had to I've been playing with the wire a lot. There we go. And see how that silver bead will climb right up in see how it'll climb right up inside that loop if it's not closed properly? So it's a really good indication that your loop is not closed properly if your beads are running around all over the place inside it. And I gotta get the bead back down. It doesn't want to go back down. Come on, bead. Come on. And this happens. And anybody tells you it doesn't happen, well, they're either using really, really big beads all the time, and there's lots and lots and lots of space, or Yep, see that one doesn't want to go down. So I'm going to take this and crank it this way. There we go. I get it to go down. Crank it back. Crank this over. And then we'll fix it and make it look pretty. Ta-da! Now, right now, they're both going the same way. See? Do -do 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 -do. Pretty well. So i got to make them where they're supposed to go. So I'm going to take this one. And this one's got to lay straight, and this one's got to be the other way, so it doesn't really matter which one we twist. I'm going to twist the top one since I have it in my pliers. So I'm holding this one, and, and you can use two sets of pliers if you need to. In this case, I f my fingers aren't liking this very much, so I'm going to use two sets of pliers. So I'm going to hold it with one set of flush nose, flat nose, I sort of should say. So this one is coming. How do I explain this? This one's coming this way, straight up and down. 
and because I have so much stuff on my board. And this one needs to be opposite it, so. Okay, that's the same. I need to be opposite. Sorry, so I'm just tweaking it till it's, one's going one way and one's going the other way. And with his bead that moves around in the middle, which is fine, because it's, I want it to move around in the middle, it's really hard to make sure I'm on plane. There we are. You'll know it when you put it on. Okay, so we got all our elements done. Woohoo! So we need this, and we need a jump ring. So, again, I'm using my two pliers. So only, I've only used four tools today, and if you don't count my ruler. I'm going to open the jump ring, and I'm going to put them in an order, okay? So there's a, an order to this. You got, let's see how this one is, the fat one on the inside. So let's put the fat one on first. Fat one on. Do, 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 do. Okay, this one, to the front. Okay, so to the front. This next one on. And then we put the turtle's tail on. So we're all on. Everybody's on board. And this way you only have to open and shut the jump ring once. Yay! Yeah, you're not going to get jump ring tutorials out of me, so don't ask for it. You're not going to get them. Can you see how awkward I am with these things? Especially when I have to keep it under gamma. It's even worse. So I'm just rocking this back and forth until I know that they're good and solid. Checking the top angle. Everything's closed nice and solid and happy. And guess what we have? We have the second one done. And this thing, stuff on the bottom will move all over the place and that's okay. And now we just have to add our ear hook. I'm just going to open it up. Just like put the ear hook on. It doesn't really matter which way it goes because this whole thing wiggles around everywhere. Okay. So now we have our second set of earrings. And these dangle. So there's our second set of earrings. So let's see what we've accomplished today. So there's one set of earrings. And let's pull out the other ones. So we've got two sets of beautiful earrings. If I can get it to behave. There we go. I want to get the front of the disc down. There we go. So there's our two sets of earrings. Let me move my board over so you can see that we've made today with a few beads, a few chips, a stone, uh, a charm maybe. Um, you could put like a word, peace or uh, love or, um, you know, with this one you, you need to have something to hang those things on. So again, you could use the jump ring if you wanted to. Um, anything you have uh, has four holes in it and there's a lot of findings out there nowadays and um, sort of lattice work, open lattice work pieces that you can do stuff with. So, you know, definitely have some fun. Uh, keep an eye out for some of these. You can find these actually at Michael's as well. Not these exact ones, but ones that have four holes in them. So enjoy. Keep on making from Annie's Makings. I hope you found this uh, a good learning for someone who's new, that you learned how to do some basic uh, wire manipulations, so make wire loops and stuff, so that you could make yourself uh, two different sets of beautiful earrings, one to give away and one to keep. Take care. Keep on making from Annie's Makings. Bye-bye.